you see that? He was horizontally inside a vertical with his forearm action. Beautiful. Here it is at uh, high speed. Let's see if he does the same thing here. Back to the upper arm. Not bad. Now, is he going to be horizontally inside? Yeah, real close. There's the release. Now, see the immediate pronate? Turn the palm of his hand up where he pronated so hard. That's the ideal way to use the pitching arm. That's the most powerful way you can use a pitching arm. It is totally injury free. And you'll do things with a baseball you never knew you could do before. Now, it's hard to get all that coordinated. I will watch this young man doing a, the same drill. And we'll see how we evaluate his skill at using the Tismus Dorsey. because all it requires, it doesn't care which leg you step forward. You know, it's a legal delivery in that you, in terms of the rules, mm -hmm. but I sort of like to have the body rotation help to accelerate the ball before the arm accelerates it. Right. So we will continue to use the correct foot forward. <coughs> now, that's not too bad. He has pretty much the, the front of his, uh, back of his elbow forward. He got outside of vertical. He didn't get horizontally inside, so it wasn't as good as the first fellow, but that's not too bad. Spin axis is more of a side-to-side uh, you know, -side spin axis, uh, whereas the, the first fellow did a better job of getting the spin axis right. Now here's that pronation curve, where we're pronating the release of the curve rather than supinating the release. And I call it max line because we're driving it to the glove, uh, pitching arm side of home plate. And there's the movement of the pitch and the arm action. All right, see the elbow pop up. What does the Tismus Dorsey do? It inwardly rotates pitching up her arm. Now we'll watch the high speed film. That's always fun, but I, that pop up is the cue that he's using the Tismus Dorsey. A little bit of a hook action there with the wrist that's unnecessary. Could cause some difficulties. Here comes the back of the pitching elbow. That's not bad. It could be a little bit more, but not bad. Let's watch the release. See if he pronates right away. Yep. Pronates. Yeah. Could have been a little bit stronger. Took a little longer than it needed to. And look at the beautiful spin axis. That's great. And the spin velocity is good. We can count each one of those. One, two, three, four, five. If I started at the beginning, we could, we could count them. And it's easy to do in my video studio because I can go through one frame at a time and uh, count them, which is what I do. And that's his curveball. He actually uh, gets a, a higher spin velocity, as I recall. He uses his arm better on the curveball, although he didn't get his arm up the drive line height by the time the glove foot landed there, as he should have, which means there's a little drag on his arm action, you know, lose velocity. But you see that, what I call the pronation circle, see that arm action, watch you come up and then uh, watch his arm provide a, a tight circle. There's the release, and now afterwards the elbow goes up, and there's the circle action. Get the high speed film. I don't like that, that uh, little turnover there. He didn't get his arm up in time. Back to the elbow pretty good here. And pretty vertical. And there's the release. His hand turned out. And that's you know, the movement of max. You know how long it takes you to get to maximum pronation from release? Well, you, of course you don't. Three one-hundredths of a second. And immediately after you get there, notice that the hand turns back. Immediately afterwards. That is why nobody knows about this. If you're taking 30 frames a second, you'll never see it. You have to take 500 frames a second in order to see it. Six minutes? 15. Oh, 15? Yes. Okay. Now, here are the fastballs. We've got two targets. He's thrown to the one on the right right now. And those are, those are 140 feet away. And bang, right there in the center, nice toss. See that snapping action, that fulcrum snapping action, where parallel and opposite directors force on either side of the point of the elbow? I think technique-wise, he's a little better now. He was a little bit too much outside of vertical. He's, I think he's learned to be more inside. A little bit of a wrapping action there that I don't like. Let's see if he gets it back to the pitching elbow off. And, all right, I mean, it's not bad. And outside of vertical, just a little bit. 
good release on two, three, four, five, six, seven ankles out of frame. But you can't spin a fastball as fast as you can a breaking ball because all the force is just coming off the tip of the fingers. Whereas throwing a curveball or a screwball, you're actually playing spin to the ball. Here's the fastball. I don't have him from a long distance, so we're using the one off the, off the uh, mound. See, he, does, he has sort of a half late pitch and form turnoff. He doesn't raise his arm all the way up the shoulder. I raise it about here and then turns it over. He shouldn't just go straight up. He shouldn't raise the upper arm at all. And that causes him velocity. You can't, can't get the full velocity if your arm's going forward and it's still in a process of going backwards. You want to have a positive velocity when you enter the acceleration phase. That makes sense? If I'm back here and I, don't re and I enter the acceleration phase with a positive velocity, the acceleration will add to that velocity. And if you have your body moving forward throughout the motion, instead of being stopped and bending forward, the velocity of your body will add to the release velocity that you achieve. This is the torque fastball, which means we're throwing to the one on the left. We want the ball to move to the glove side of home plate. And there it comes. And instead of breaking one of the boards of my he actually hits the target. see high speed film of his half reverse pivot drill. Here it is. Watch how quickly he pronates this. Boom. Now watch the fingers. Wow. Look at that. Turn it all the way up. Pronated the release of fastball that moves that way. When everybody thinks you pull that across, he actually pronated the release. And you see he has the outside of the ball, the uh, pitch on the side of the ball turned forward, the ball moves. And uh, here's the front view. See how that ball moves nicely? Ball comes up there and it's a cutter without actually cutting the ball. It's because we apply force off the tip of the finger with the fingers inside rather than outside. There with the back of the elbow. It could be better. That's pretty vertical, not bad. And his fingers, strong pronation. Look at that. Three hundredths of a second took the arm to get that far. Actually, all I do is count off 15 frames. Okay. Oh yeah, well, I want to take questions, of course. You might got any questions for Dr. Yeah, that's sort of, ooh, you didn't know anything. <laughs> that's baseball pitching to the extreme, right? You never heard any of that stuff anywhere before. But it could be all injury free, and the quality of the game could be so much better. But we got to get coaches who are not kinesiologists out of the jobs of coaching and put kinesiologists in there teaching these people, kids, and, uh, and so on. The reality is what's going on in the motion. I have a standing offer. Any major league pitcher, I will take high speed film and video and make the same DVD of them for free. All I want is the ability to display what you did after I make the video. I want to copy, I want to put it on, and I want to critique your pitching motion. How many takers do you think I've had? That same zero. Now, if I were a major league pitcher, sincere about my career, and I didn't want to suffer injuries, I would do it just to find out how crazy this old guy is. And they'll find out that what they're doing is, listen, there's no middle linebacker attacking the pitcher on the mound, destroying his pitching arm or his legs or his back. There's no blitzes going on here. He's doing the damage to himself, right? He's the one that generates the forces that injures himself. And it's not appropriately applied forces that injures him. It's the unnecessary forces that injures him. Because we are meant to throw. 
we are meant to throw. We throw spears and hit animals to eat with a long time ago. And they threw spears. Watch the javelin thrower. They do it right. It's up here. The arm is there, you know, they're running along. <laughs> All that stuff. And then they get their arm in here and right like this, just like we're showing, and they let that thing go. Of course, they go at an upward angle. We go straight up. But they use the arm essentially correct. And that's how they do that. Well, our forefathers, many, many, many years, years ago, or 4,000 years ago, or more, I don't know when, when 10,000 years they say life started on Earth. Okay. Anybody? No? <laughs> They grabbed a stick and they threw it into an animal and they ate it. We are meant to throw. Throwing is not an unnatural action. It is a natural action we're meant to do. We got a Latismus Dorsey to do it with. We just have been too damn dumb to use it. All right, if you have questions, I, I understand. I always get this stunned response after I get done talking. I say, what was all of that? But that's all right. You know, gives you something to think about. And hopefully it lets you know Never to accept anything that you've been taught about how to perform a skill. Do it your own analysis. Get your own high-speed camera, like I did. Take high-speed film of, of who you believe are skilled performers, and then an, uh, analyze it in terms of Newton's three motion. First one, bodies prefer to remain rest in uniform straight line motion unless act upon by an external force. Baseball pitchers are that external force. Therefore, you drop that out, and we don't want the baseball at rest, so all of a sudden, all that becomes, in terms of a line, a, 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 a law of force application is, baseball pitchers should apply force in a straight line at a uniform, uh, uniform, which means a uniform acceleration pace. So you don't want to have all these hooks and nooks and stops and jerks. You want to have uniform acceleration, where you accelerate it, at the same amount throughout the drive line until you get to the maximum release at release. Uh, quickly, law number two, the acceler law of acceleration. The acceleration object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object and proportional to the force applied to it or the other way around, whichever you want, or force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the change of velocity divided by the time period it took to accelerate it. So basically the release velocity that you achieve is related is equal to the force that you apply toward home plate, but only toward home plate, times the time period over which you apply that force, divided by the mass of the object, which is constant, will drop it from this formula. You want to increase release velocity, apply more force uniformly throughout the drive line for a longer drive line or a greater length of time. It's that simple, and it goes for all activities. I don't care if it's shot putting or uh, football punting or any other kind of activity. The one that nobody seems to grasp, he's my major professor, Husner. Law, the law of reaction. For every action force, there's an equal out of reaction force. That's rocket science. That means that you can only apply as much force forward as you apply in the opposite direction. Equal and opposite direction. This force relates to that force. Therefore, you apply force toward home plate with the pitching arm. With what do you apply force toward second base? Everything else. You apply force with the pitching foot towards second base, apply force with the glove foot towards second base by continuing to move forward, you arm towards second base, and then your pitching hip, you drive through off of the glove foot. You've got to generate more force towards second base. You should not be out here like this, leaning forward, doing nothing. And that's how you use the legs and satisfy the kinetic chain. Notice that we use the legs throughout the entire pitching motion. We satisfy the kinetic chain. We use the tricep, so we use the, elbow, the pitching elbow correctly. That is a pure kinetic change force application technique. That's what you're supposed to be designed for athletes to perform all skills. That's what we're all about. And that's how kinesiology changed my life. And I got to win a Cy Young Award at my mighty height of five, eight and a half. I got to finish first, second, fourth, fifth, and seventh in the Cy Young Award back before closers were, uh, relief pitchers were considered for the Cy Young Award. Why was I considered? Because I pitched 208 innings of closing relief. They got starters today that win Cy Young Awards that don't pitch that much. Never.
could pitch every single day. I pitched in 106 games in one year, 208 closing.